بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا آقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وإمام المرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا تعويل وجعلنا من خير أمة سيدنا محمد عليه أفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم اللهم لا إلم لنا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم we seek Allah's protection from knowledge that does not benefit, uh, benefit us from a, a heart that has no khushu, from a nafs that's never had enough, from an eye that is not tear, from a dua that's not heard. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, so um, as I mentioned last week that I'm going to still try to do the lessons. I've had to come uh, uh, come abroad to, to Pakistan, well, specifically to Azad Kashmir home. Um, uh, just for, 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 uh, um, so what we're going to try to do inshallah is uh, because the internet is so great here well not so great um, I'm going to try I'm, so I'm recording this I'm actually recording a day before hopefully it gives you enough time to then upload or whatever I need to do because I've never kind of done an upload actually I did one when it was a, a live by the because that at that time they were, you know, it wouldn't allow me to do a live stream. So we'll see how we go, inshallah. Um, just be warned, there'll be a lot of background noise. I'm gonna come out on the balcony here so I can get a bit of sunshine because it gets to quite quite cold. Um, and then if someone kind of charges in, the two options either I stop it and then I'll have to restart again, or um, just let it happen, so just be warned, someone just walking and said, yeah, Anji, uh, just going to have to get used to it. Okay, so until the next few weeks, be like this. Um, actually, it depends on uh, if you see this Monday normal time, that means it's worked. Uh, if it's late, then obviously it's not worked. But yeah, let's see how it goes. Inshallah, as we always do, let's start with um, speaking about uh, uh, the people of Palestine. Please, please continue to make dua for them. Remember them in your duas. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them. Um, it's difficult times because uh, things have not stopped. It just, it's a case of, you know, every day you, you hear a new story and think, you know, it can't get this bad, but it just gets worse and worse. You know, there's a kind of a limit to uh, what can be done, what kind of used to be considered as all inhumane. Now it's almost a case of, you know, it's normal and no one kind of, but it's an eyelid really, no matter what happens. Um, so please continue to remember them in your duas. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them. Um, grant them victory, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees as victory for them. Uh, and continue to raise the voice for the loan. Um, do not stop in that aspect. I think getting the message across has been vital. People kind of seeing it and, and it kind of a lot of stuff has been is getting exposed, you know. Whereas previously it would just go past by and people will just accept it for what it is. It's not the case now, um, and that's due to uh, you know, uh, mashallah, we have across well, you know Muslims, non-Muslims as well, educated people who kind of come out with the right questions, challenge in the right way, and I think that's important continue doing that in the in the right way i think that's really important in the right way don't give them an opportunity to pick on something you know which no doubt they'll be looking forward to okay inshallah so please please continue to raise and i know there's a lot of uh, chat work being doing done as well uh, you know money being raised uh, for the good cause or wherever possible uh, wherever you can assist please do so so inshallah let's continue um let's lesson Actually, um, so I was going to speak about um, the Sahaba, uh, some of the new kind of who converted to Islam, but there was this particular kind of issue, or as an issue, but a situation that arose at this time, around about this time, uh, in the Sira. So I think it was important to cover that as well. So last week we spoke about the ban on alcohol and events after Khaybar. Uh, one of those was. Um, um, uh, uh, around how the kind of uh, you know one of the topics was around the 
how the women behaved, you know, um, and kind of there'll be a couple of incidents that involve Sayyidina Umar, okay, at the end of it, kind of his remarks on how the women of Makkah have changed living with the women of Ansar, and, and you'll see that aspect here, and, and I suppose he brings it about again. Um, there, there is a quite a long hadith um, that he, he mentioned, and this is later on when he is the, the, the Khalifa. Um, and I, I might cover it or might not because Martin Lings actually mentions it in his, although he does not mention the first section of the hadith, um, but the, our topic today, Martin Lings has mentioned it, so I might just going to read out of what Martin Lings has, has, has said. Um, but yeah, he, he brings about, he raises this point as well at the start of the hadith because someone's asking him the question about this incident that we're going to talk about. And he mentions it there. So, um, okay, so how the wives of the Prophet ﷺ kind of spoke to him, that's what it came about from. Um, and, and when we mentioned how the Prophet ﷺ was and he kind of, he adjusted, um, he kind of, kind of rolled with the times, okay. But there's always a limit, okay? There's always a limit. And you see that limit being crossed in today's lesson. Uh, and then the consequences in the back of that, okay? Um, now we have these examples. So, you know, when we talk about, um, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam adjusting, um, allowing, etc. We have these examples in modern times, in, in our times, actually. We've seen it through some of our shiuk. You know, you've got the likes of Sheikh. Habib Umar, uh, Sheikh Habib, uh, uh, Habib Ali Jeffrey, etc. You know, from from Tehrim, where you know some of these uh, um, some of the students have mentioned that actually um, in Tehrim, for example, they lived for years and did they did not see a kind of uh, the, the face of a woman because they're all veiled. Okay, so you got the likes of Sheikh Habib Umar who come from this kind of. Uh, this is the norm here, like you, you don't see the women there, they're always covered, you know, they're veiled. But yet they come to the UK um, and they, they, they go with it, you know, how it is, like, you know, how normally we have classes here, like um, you, you kind of have a partition, men on one side, women on the other, okay? And Sheikh Habib Muhammad will, will sit in kind of uh, events, sit in talks, and deliver these talks in those situations. I mean, if he wanted to, he could turn around and say, well, I'm sorry, but if you want to come here, then, you know, you have to be veiled, uh, you know, to the women or, you know, women uh, upstairs, men downstairs, you know, this, no, they, they kind of adjusted, you know, and you, you can imagine this, you can imagine this, that, that throughout their time, this is what they, they've had, you know, you can say it's their culture there, or the way it is there, Yet they come to the UK and it's a complete change. But they, they go with it, you know. They don't. They don't always big issues with it because it's one of those. It's in 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 it, it's kind of acceptable where they are. The norm here is here. Uh, the the way it is in UK. I'm saying here, but I'm not in UK at the moment. But the way it is in the UK, um, or even actually here in, in in Kashmir, the way it is here, you don't see p uh, women, um, you know, veiled. Okay. That's how it is. Okay, uh, as long as you're kind of covering your aura, that you know you got the requirements of covering your aura. That's it. That's Islamically. That's what 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 it comes down to. Okay. So yeah, it's just to uh, kind of raise these points as well because sometimes people are really you know about to know this 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 and this. Okay, but we take from our teachers. We take from their teachers. So it's going back to. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Anyway, today uh, we're going to talk about, um, and, and we've already mentioned this, uh, Maria uh, uh, Coptic. Um, so we already spoke about Maria, the, the slave who was gifted to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It was actually two sisters from from Egypt, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gifted one to, uh, to the Hassan ibn Thabit. And actually, just remember, just you had a kind of just a year ago. And kind of mention, you know, you have this kind of slandering of uh, say the Aisha, um, but now just a year later, you know, the, the way the Prophet is, he's, he's forgiven and he's moved on. Anyway, so he he gifted the, the, the sister to Hassan ibn Thabit, okay. And now this is a sensitive subject, you know, one I would kind of prefer to kind of cover face to face, as people would have questions, no doubt, uh, and then I'm kind of able to address these questions. Okay, I'm able to address these questions. 
and I preferred it like that. Here is a case of I can come out with some points. So hence why I'm not going to go into too much detail, but if people still feel a bit uncertain, etc., then I'm always available to reach out to, to, to cover the points. Okay? I just want to quickly make sure that we're still recording away. Yeah, inshallah. So, we never kind of shy away from the discussions around the sira, etc. You know, and I've always done this, and I've always had this attitude when it came, when it comes to, um, I, I say my students, but you know, like when I have discussions, I don't really see myself as a, as a teacher in that sense. But I always feel that they can always ask a question, um, you know, without kind of all these consequences of being labelled. Oh, he's this, he's this, he's this, because you need to address these questions. If you're not going to address them, then they will go elsewhere. Okay, they'll get the answers from the, the internet or they get, well, they'll start believing those that are, their job is to just kind of, um, you know, go against Islam, um, just find little points against Islam and raise this even, you know, to, the, the, way, the way it's done is, is a topic is picked. You know, so example you have of the um, the age of Sayyidina Aisha, which we've already discussed. And um, kind of take that, but then kind of uh, you know, bring about their own kind of twist to it. Okay. Um, so then you have elements of truth in there, but then they add with the exaggeration and all that. And it's our responsibility to kind of clarify, this is the situation, this is how it was. You know, even if it's a case of yes, what they're saying is correct. I mean, I'm just talking about any other topic as well. What they're saying is correct. But remember, this was the situation. Okay, so that, you know, you have to bring about the circumstances all around it. Okay, um, so yeah, we never shy away from this. Okay, um, you know, certain things were accepted at that time, which is not the case now. And then they did fic around these kind of things, you know. I think it's important that we... Uh, we don't start going too much on, t on, on the defensive, you know, you, you make your point and that's it, you know, people will continually try to find faults regardless, okay? I mean, look at the example of um, the Jews and the Christians, you know, according to their own books, the likes of, you know, like uh, David and Solomon, um, just to name a few, had hundreds of wives and many concubine, okay? Yeah, when it comes to the Prophet some having nine wives and, and, you know, one concubine. And actually that was the, not the case for the majority of his, his life, remember. These marriages, etc. and all that, this kind of take, they take place in Medina. And there is, like I said, all wisdom that behind it. Um, which again, we don't need to always try to justify. And say, oh, it's because of this, because of this. We know when you look at, when you look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu when you look at his seerah, when we know about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best of creation, everything he's done, okay? We know, uh, you know, the, the kind of the best character. Um, you, you bring it about like that. And then you know that certain things, these little, little things here and there, right? There'll be reasons behind it and, you know, all the situation around that time. You've got you to gotta factor all that into it, okay? Um, however, to make it kind of clear, as people try to use this as a, a ruling now, you know, keeping slaves, etc., uh, and, and we've discussed this, you know, uh, this topic, and it's unacceptable. You know, it's unacceptable. So let's just make that completely clear, uh, just in case someone tries to kind of justify it. Okay. Now, if we took the, uh, if we look at the example of uh, Maria, look at, you know, how she was treated. Well, say how she treated actually, because specifically how she was treated by the Prophet you know, given the house, etc., treated well. Uh, in terms of how others treated her, you know, we'll speak about that today, inshallah. Okay. Now, what happens is that the wives of the Prophet ﷺ had an issue uh, with with Maria. They, you know, they knew that the Prophet ﷺ was within his rights. Okay, rights which had been recognized from the time of Abraham and 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 kind of before, you know, and before that, it was kind of it, it was allowed. Uh, you know, he, he was allowed to take her as a concubine on a, uh, a kind of condition of her free consent. So you, again, you had the thick ruling on that. So it was the case of she had to consent to that. You know, it's a case it was nothing was forced upon. So she had to consent to that. And 
which she 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 did, okay. And kind of initially, the wives kind of um, did a petition and said that you know we we don't want her house to be here. You know, like I said, you know, as as with the remaining wives of the Prophet you know, the um, they they did not want the 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 house to be close to the masjid. Okay, like the rest. So the Prophet ﷺ agreed to this. Okay. You could start talking about oh, what issue did they have with her, etc. I mean, she was, as described, she was beautiful. Okay, she was beautiful. You know, um, he he has a son from her, so whether you know that kind of played a part that the fact that um, you know she, she she got pregnant and none of the other wives did. You know, there, there's a lot of discussion around this topic. Okay, because then you bring about these kind of ancient time things of uh, you know, um, don't want to go into too much, but yeah, there's there's a lot of here and there uh, about it. But the the bottom line was that they they were not comfortable. They had issues, and they said, look, initial was that she shouldn't be around here. So the Prophet some agreed. Okay, so he um, and actually, uh, I'll see if I can find um, I can find the area that she she lived where the Prophet Sallallahu traveled a lot. Okay, I'll try to see if I can bring it about, and um, maybe maybe next lesson, inshallah, show that. Anyway, so he agreed to that, moved away. But all he meant was that now he would kind of travel now there to spend time with her. Okay, so after that, what next happened is that the wives then said, well, it was actually uh, we say that Aisha Radhiallahu has support, saying the Hafsa approaches the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, expresses kind of collective displeasure of other wives okay um you know it's okay so we don't want you to spend be spending time with her and now look at the tolerance of the prophet sallallahu okay he said okay um you know all of you are saying not to spend time with her okay i won't so the the kind of complaint kind of plays on his sensitive nature okay and the prophet sallallahu kind of swears not to see maria again Okay. Now, pretty much immediately, or kind of the next day, you know, revelation comes down. You know, Surah Tahrim, uh, which um, uh, which takes its name from the kind of uh, infinitive form of the verb um, harama, um, you know, forbid, kind of the kind of root meanings of forbid, you know, make something unlawful. That's what the kind of name come about from. So, pretty much, you know, you you've got this surah about uh, revelation and it, it starts off on that you know oh prophet oh prophet you are the the the, the greatest uh, you're the greatest representative of the prophet okay why do you forbid yourself why do you forbid what god has made lawful to you okay seeking to uh, please your wives so kind of why are you forbidding this to please your wives okay and at the end of it again, you got and God is all forgiving, all compassionate, and you kind of see the similar in the in the next verse as well. Um, God has already decreed for you, you know, like in all believers, on the breaking of your oaths. Okay, so to do what is not just and right, you know, it's a case of look, as much as you've kind of made an oath of a promise that you will not, but because it's not just and right, you know, it's like um, this point is made clear. God is your guardian and he is the all-knowing and all-wise, okay? So as it happens, so it's happened to the Prophet Sallallahu kind of, um, this, sorry, the, um, I'm just saying as it happened, that was not part of the the verse, but then it's it's like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so the verse continues, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the Prophet confided something to one of his wives and when she divulged it, okay, to another. So what happened is that, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi informed, it was saying the Hafsa, about something, and she went and kind of divulged it, kind of uh, mentioned it further to someone, uh, uh, you know, to another. And then, and God acquainted him of it. So, and the, you know, he made known part of it and missed out part of it. And again, this is one of the proofs that, you know, you, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kind of had, and we've discussed this about revelation and how, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not always come across and inform us of everything okay and there was all the part you know forms of revelation so uh, he made known part of it and missed out part of it and when he informed her of it 
she asked her when he informed her of this, she kind of asked, oh, who told you this? And, you know, so that's what it is, who has told you this? He said, he informed me who is the all-knowing, the all-aware. So, you know, when the Prophet Sallallahu then uh, approached her about this, that was how she said, oh, who told you this? That kind of, I've told someone else, you know, one of the other ones. Um, and again, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and, and as, the, as the verse says, you know, who has, you know, the one informed me who is the all-knowing, the all-aware. Okay, and then the verse continues, the next verse, if two, if you too, as in the, the wives of the Prophet, turn to God in repentance, you know, then that is indeed what, you know, kind of, that is indeed what you should do. Uh, for the heart of both of you swerved from what is right. But if you back each other up against him, like be mindful that God is himself his guardian. We talked about the Prophet ﷺ, God is himself his guardian and the uh, uh, Gabriel and the righteous ones among the believers and all the angels besides are his helpers. Okay, so it was all kind of part of this thing to isolate Maria. This is kind of where we kind of came about from. Okay. Um, Uh, the, the, we'll just the, uh, um, we've got the next verse and then uh, just kind of the ending as well so it, it, it may happen that his lord if he should divorce you as in our wives of you you know the, the prophet will give him in your place wives better than you okay um, submissive to God uh, like Muslima uh, true in faith uh, Mu'mina uh, devoted in obedience to God, okay, penitent to repentant, dedicated to worship and fasting, widows or virgins, okay. So now, firstly, um, let me actually make it clear that it's not a case that the wives didn't have the the praiseworthy qualities because we you know we've we've discussed that in you know extensively in in, in detail, okay. However, it was a case it reminds them that both as Muslim and women, and especially as the wives of the messenger. They should kind of set an example for all the believing women. Thus, they should have these qualities in the highest degree and retain them. Okay, so you see how these these verses kind of they come about like this, but then the verses change. So Allah goes from um, this very specific, you know, very stern message to the wives uh, of the Prophet Sallallahu and then kind of opens it up, you know, um, a, f a few verses later. Okay, a few verses later, all you who believe, um, turn to God in sincere and reforming repentance. Yeah? It is hoped that your Lord will blot your evil deeds from you and admit you in gardens through which rivers flow on a day when God will not disgrace nor disappoint the Prophet and those who believe in his company. Okay? There, you know, the, the, the believers, light will shine and spread before them on the right hand, as they say, "Our Lord, perfect our light, you know, by your grace, so that we may reach paradise, and forgive us. Surely you have all power over everything." Okay, um, and the surah ends by mentioning two wives of um, of a prophet that disobeyed that prophet and met an evil um, end. And two that were kind of righteous. So you know, like both examples. So you have the the, the unrighteous examples of uh, the the wife of say the uh, Nuh salam and the wife of say the Lut salam. Okay, and the the righteous ones was one of the wife uh, the, the, the 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 wife of Pharaoh and the um, and the daughter of Imran uh, uh, say the Mar Maryam. Okay, salam. Okay, so this is the two examples that are given kind of for them. Now, at this point, the Prophet ﷺ goes into seclusion and says that he will spend one month by himself, you know, away from his wives, and then make a decision. So this is the magic look going to seclusion. Um, you know, in this one month, his wives were kind of really sorrowful. Uh, this kind of really, really hurt them. Okay. Um, because look, look, straight away the you had the revelation where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala saying to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you know what's lawful for you why are you making it unlawful why have you done that just to please your wives and this was the nature of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
you got to look at the tolerance etc of the prophet sallallahu anyway so this is what happened this is why he decided so this was a real difficult time for the wives of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know no one no one saw them in public they were kind of confined to their their houses you know weeping all the time you know say that aisha mentioned said that i lost uh, i lost weight I, I was crying all the time i didn't know what was going to happen you know say umar was worried and actually uh, you know say the umar was worried and went to his his daughter what had happened etc you know and remember say the umar actually mentioning a lot of the stuff uh, was it last week we mentioned it uh, you know yeah it was last week we mentioned it, you know it's like a um, uh, he mentioned all this before you know you can say it it was like a a told you saw moment okay you know up to a point it was all fine but then when you overstep the mark so they wanted their their way and their their you know their their way that's, that's fine but now you've overstepped the mark okay you you know your mark onto someone else let me quickly re- read actually cuz um martin links puts it actually and cuz he he mentions the kind of within his description he mentions the hadith as well so we kind of cover it like that okay so when he had create uh, when he had recited this revelation to his wives the prophet left them uh, to meditate upon it mm. okay one minute brief pause because we've just already gone through that Yeah, so you mentioned revelations, etc. Anyway, so when he had recited this revelation to his wives, the Prophet Sallallahu left them to meditate upon it and withdrew to a roofed uh, veranda, which was the only room he had but for their apartment. So it was the only place that he could go that was alone. The other was obviously apartments of his wives. News spread throughout Medina that he had divorced his wives and it came to the ears of Umar that night. At dawn, he went as usual to the mosque but immediately after the prayer um, before umur could address uh, umur could address him the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam withdrew to his porch they went off quickly before say umur could pro- approach him umur went to hafsa and found her in tears why we pissed though you know why are you crying sir? he said adding before she could answer did i not tell you did i not tell thee what would happen you know has god's messenger divorced you and she replies i know not okay but he is there secluded by himself because she put points towards you know in that porch um its entrance from the mosque to which umar now returned there were gathered group of men sitting around the pulpit some of them were in tears umar sat with them for a while and then unable to endure his feelings he went to the door of the porch where a black abyssinian boy a servant of the prophet was sallallahu alaihi wasallam was standing ask permission for umar to enter he said to the boy who went in and then Uh, came out after a moment saying i mentioned you to him but he was silent umar returned to where he had been sitting then he went again to ask if he may enter and again he was told that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had made no response this happened yet a third time but just as umar had turned away the boy called out to him that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had said he you know he may enter umar went in and found him reclining on a rashmat this is the famous kind of narration of you know how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam lived um a led, uh, uh, reclining on a rashmat his back which was partly bare showed clearly the marks of the matting where he had pressed against his skin and this is the best of creation look at how he lived you know i look at us in our comfortable beds etc and we still complain um was at his side and on his he, he was leaning his eyes were downcast and he did not look at umar as he entered o oh, messenger of god said umar has the uh, divorced his, uh, his wives the prophet raised his eyes to umar no i have not he said allahu akbar allahu akbar explained uh, exclaimed umar in a voice which could be heard in all the neighboring houses okay um salama said afterward i was weeping when anyone came on to me they said has god's messenger divorced you and i said by god i know no not this continued until umar came to the prophet we heard his magnification we were all in our apartments and we knew that the messenger had answered no to his question 
there was in fact only one question in anybody's mind and they were certain that Umar would be especially preoccupied with it on account of his daughter. So, you know, they knew that, look, he, that'll be on his mind as well. And because Umar's daughter as well, no doubt he will raise this question. Yeah. I stood there, said Umar, feeling my way with him. So he's a kind of Umar there trying to feel his way, you know, start, uh, how's the weather and this and that, you know, so let's see how the situation is. So he goes, I stood there feeling my way with the messenger of God uh, as to what was his state. And I said, we were used to having, uh, you know, we, we men of grace, the upper hand over our wives. But when we came to the, when we came to Medina, we came onto people whose wives have the upper hand over them. He saw a kind of, kind of suggestion of a smile across the Prophet Sallallahu face. So he went on to tell him what he had previously said to Hafsa by way of warning. And again, the Prophet Sallallahu smiled. Whereupon he ventured to sit down. Once more, he was struck by the bareness of the room. So he looked around, you know, a mat on the floor, three leather cushions, and nothing else. He suggested that the Prophet Sallallahu should allow himself more luxuries. You know, the, you know you're the Prophet. And, and, and by the way of contrast, uh, he mentioned the Greeks. You know, look at the Greeks, even look at the Persians. But he was cut short with the words, uh, you know, are you in no doubt, O son of uh, Khattab? Their good things have been kind of hastened for them in their earthly life. So this is for this earthly life, okay? As is kind of for next life. It was now the time of the new moon and the Prophet Sallallahu let it down. Uh, let it be known to his wives that he did not wish to see any of them until the months of you mentioned that had passed when the moon had altogether waned he went first to say the Aisha's apartment delighted to see him yet surprised he said to him it is but 29 nights and he asked her oh how do you know uh, and she said uh, I have been counting them you know like I've been counting them I know each and every one you know uh, but and then the Prophet said but this was a month of 29 okay um, she had forgotten in all of this, you know, you know, she had forgotten that um, a lunar month is sometimes only 29 days instead of 30. He then told her of another revelation that he had received, which made it necessary for him to put before her a choice. And obviously this choice will be put before all the wives. Two possibilities. Okay, two possibilities. <clears throat> Uh, and he said, he said, you can ask your father to help in by counseling her in the matter. You know, like, if you want, you can counsel with your father before you answer me. And she straight away said, nay, uh, you know, no, like, uh, you know, uh, none, none shall help me with this regard to me. It's like, I'm going to make my own decision. But tell me why it is, O messenger of God. He answered saying, God put forth before you uh, this choice and then he recited the newly revealed verses O prophet say unto the wives if you desire this lower life and its adornments then come and i will bestow its good upon you and i will release you with a fair release but if you desire god and his messenger and the abode of the hereafter then verily god has laid in store for you uh, a, a mere immense for such of you as to good she said, Verily, I, I, I desire God. She said straight away, Verily, I desire God and his messenger and the abode of the hereafter. And, and there was not one of the wives who did not say the same. So all of them, obviously, you know, they, 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 they picked that. That was, that was the, that, the choice that they wanted. Okay. So what we see here is that this is one of these kind of situations you, you know, you can take much from this. Okay, there are differences, you know, cultural differences, and then you can be, you know, that, that can be accepted. But there is always a limit, you know, when does a cultural difference become unacceptable? Okay, when it uh, transgresses, okay, the right of another, okay, either side. When say either side, when, you know, um, uh, you know, when you have these kind of, uh, I remember our teacher kind of describing as well, and then all these kind of scholars have their discussions. Someone approaches him, oh, when uh, can I strike my wife this way and that way? And he's just saying, oh, why is this question even coming about? Even when you come to the time of the Prophet, when some of the men wanted to strike their wives, the Prophet said to those of you, said, those of you that do this are, are not the, the, the best of you. So there was a limit, okay? That was a limit. He placed a limit on what you can do, okay? The issue is when you uh, when you stand on one cultural perspective uh, you limit your vision okay the rule is that 
um, for the rule that we take, the, 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 the means take the end. So the ruling, you know, um, you know what, what is the end outcome? Okay, the means is based on the at end outcome. If the end outcome is likely, unlikely, then the means, you know, the ruling is based on that. Okay, and this is important. Okay, um, so that was a kind of like a, a, a difficult period for the wives, and again, make you know how the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, the situation that um, that this this is wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, the our mothers. You know, we've praised and and, and we continue to. Um, the qualities were you know, next level, but again, this situation came about, um, and 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 you see this. I mean, whenever we speak, we speak about the, you know, when we speak about the companions, the sahaba, the wives, you know, the, they're human, okay. And this is all kind of a learning for us. All of this was to teach us in situations like this. This is what you need to be careful about, okay. So this was the situation that came about. Inshallah, and I thought just kind of we need to mention this important as, uh, aspect that we need to mention um, as we move along the seerah. Um, so Inshallah, we'll continue uh, next week. Um, hopefully, this will get uploaded and um, in 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 the scheduled time um, uh, that we have. But yeah, um, hopefully everything goes smoothly. If there's any issues, etc., then by all means, let me know. And we'll try to kind of resolve them and deal with them. So I'll go ahead. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. 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 Subhana rabbika rabbillah. Zatam masifun. Wa salamun ala al-muslimin. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil alamin. Bi rahmatki ya rahmat rahimin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.